Hi, my name is Jason DeCoff, and I'm an associate professor with Tennessee State University. Thanks for stopping by and uh, listening to our episodes of Soil Smarts. This is the first episode, and basically we are just going to be talking very briefly about different types of things related to soils. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to take some of this information and actually apply it in the field, whether you're a homeowner or you're a, fa a farmer, so that you can have a nice, healthy soil, a productive soil, and you can grow whatever it is that, that you want to in that soil. To start off with, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, how soils are formed. So as soil scientists, we look at soil formation as very important because it helps to identify the extreme variability that there is in the soils that we have around the US. So there are a number of different ways that soils are formed and each of these different factors are involved in making each soil unique and different. These are the five different soil forming factors. And so you can see from the list here, you can get sort of an idea of how each factor is going to have a, an effect on the type of soil that's produced. For instance, if you've got differences in climate where you've got uh, certain areas that are getting more rainfall uh, and other areas that maybe have a lot of drier conditions, you're going to have um, some very different soils. Um, the soils that have a lot of precipitation are going to have a lot of leaching, a lot of um, leaching of salts and uh, clays from the soil. Whereas a drier uh, sort of soil, you're going to have actually the accumulation of some of these things, some of these salts and, and, and other things within the soil. And the same goes for differences in temperature and, and other types of climatic conditions that can have an effect. Now, when we're talking about relief, we're talking about the uh, overall slope of the soil. So obviously a, a soil that's you know, maybe um, on a slope is going to be different from the soil that's at the bottom of the slope. Um, the soil that's, that's on the slope itself is going to have a lot more erosive conditions. And so it's probably not gonna be a very deep soil. Whereas the soil at the bottom of the slope is basically going to be accumulating all of the, the different types of, of nutrients and clays and, and things that have eroded off of that soil slope, that's gonna be where it accumulates. And so it's going to be a, probably a much deeper soil than the one that's on the slope. And that's going to have different factors involved as well. Now with organisms, this can take uh, uh, into account uh, different types of plants that are growing on the soil, different animals that are going to be working in the soil. So you can have um, anything from, from moles that are producing large holes um, all the way to earthworms. Um, even uh, we can get into uh, microbes that are in the soil that are breaking down organic matter and releasing nutrients to plant roots. And all of these um, when they die, they provide organic matter to the soil, which is very important in providing a lot of benefits to the soil when it comes to the structure of the soil, the movement of water and nutrients within the soil, the movement of air within the soil. Um, and it also provides a, a stable, slowly soluble um, portion of nutrients to the plants. With parent material, we're talking here about the bedrock. So this is essentially the mineral component of the soil. So the soil is made up of sands and silts and clays, and these largely come from the bedrock that um, is beneath the soil um, that, that it, was, it was formed from. And so this can have an effect on the type of nutrients that are present in the soil, um, whether it's, it's something maybe that derived from from limestone, it's going to have a, uh, a, a higher pH because of the, the liming effect of that limestone. Also, um, you know, depending upon the, the size of the particles, that's going to have an effect on the movement of water within, within that type of soil that's formed from that particular type of parent material or bedrock. And then lastly, we've got time. And so time is a big factor where, um, you know, something where material has been provided to the surface recently, that 
that material is not going to be as weathered. It's not going to be as broken down as much. Um, and so it's going to be de definitely be different from a soil that's been there from a very long, for a very long time. That's had a lot of leaching. That's had a lot of weathering to break down, you know, some of the, some of the particles that are there and release certain nutrients. So now this is the uh, components of an ideal soil. This is really what we want to see in a soil. And so basically about 50% of the soil is going to be made up of this solid portion. And the majority of that solid portion are going to be the inorganic minerals. So those are the things that I just mentioned, the sands and the silts and the clays. Those are going to make up the majority of that solid portion of the soil. And a, a smaller portion uh, is going to be made up by the organic matter. Usually about three to five percent. You can get more if you're if you're looking at a soil that's got a high organic matter content. But even though there's a small amount of organic matter, this organic matter really goes a long way towards coloring the soil, giving it that nice dark, rich color that we're used to when we're when we're thinking about a, a fertile soil. And it can also provide a lot of added benefits, even you know, though it's it's only about only makes up about three to five percent of the soil. Now on the other side, we've got the space portion. And this is going to be made up by air and water. And we really want this to be equally divided between air and water so that uh, essentially the plant roots can get the um, water that it needs to go about its, its normal physiological functioning and growth and, and, and be able to produce high yields. Um, but we also want to have air that's available so that the, um, the plant roots, which are going to um, respire carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide is able to be mixed with oxygen that's, that's in the air um, above the soil. And so there's good mixing of air so that the plant roots can get the oxygen that it needs and remove the carbon dioxide that it doesn't need, similar to, to us as humans, where we, we take in oxygen and we, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So now that's a, a very uh, quick introduction into soils. Um, this is my contact information if you have additional questions. Please feel free also to look at some of the other episodes that are, that are online, and hopefully those will provide you additional information that's going to help you to, uh, to grow your garden or your farm and help to improve the soil that you already have.